Daniel and Cherry have been talking on the phone for a while. Today, they decided to go for a coffee. This is the first time they're going to meet in person, and they haven't seen any pictures of each other. Cherry texts Daniel, I will wear a pair of pink hair clips. When Daniel arrives at the coffee shop, he sees three ladies, and surprisingly, all of them are wearing pink hair clips. Can you help Daniel find his date? Take a look at the first table carefully. There are two coffee mugs. This means that this lady is already with someone. The lady sitting at the second table is already enjoying her coffee and a book. Clearly, she's not here for a date. And the third lady is wearing a beautiful dress and her table is empty. Therefore, she's Cherry. Cherry's ex-boyfriend, Drake, is a powerful magician. He doesn't want to let her go, so he kidnaps Cherry and locks her on top of a high tower. With only one window and no doors at all. Also, Drake sets a magic fire around the tower for extra protection and leaves. Cherry realizes that she has little time to escape. She looks around and sees three magic potions. The bottles are labeled. One would give her incredible physical strength. The other one would turn Cherry into a vampire. And the third one would let her summon any animal. Which potion should she use? Even if Cherry destroys the tower, she can do nothing with the magic fire. And no animal can help her escape. But if she becomes a vampire, she'll be able to turn into a bat and fly away. Cherry escapes and finds herself in an enchanted forest. Can you find four magical creatures here? Take a look at this cave. There's a troll hiding inside. Also, there are two pixies sitting on the flowers. And this tree is a wood goblin. Cherry goes ahead and finds a road sign. There are three routes leading to the nearest village. An immortal fire-breathing dragon is guarding the first path. The second route lies through the lands of a witch. She hates men and turns every guy who dares to enter her land into a stone statue. And the third path is a habitat for leopards. Can you help Cherry choose the best route? The second option sounds good. Cherry is a woman, so the witch has no reason to turn her into a statue. Because she only hates men. Cherry asks the witch to help her find the village. The witch offers a deal. If you crack my pattern riddle, I'll tell you. But if not, you'll be my servant forever. Cherry had nothing to do but agree. You can have pepper, but not salt. You can have beef, but not chicken. Carrots, broccoli, and cabbage. But no potato in any form. Oh, and you have to eat with a spoon. Can you help Cherry crack the pattern? She's only allowed items containing two of the same letters in a row. The witch helps Cherry find a road. Three drivers stop and offer a ride to the village. Can you help Cherry choose the safest option? There's a zombie hiding in the back of the first car. And there are no passenger seats in the third car. Although the second car's windshield is cracked, it's still the best choice. Finally, Cherry finds the village. This place is magical. Many amazing creatures live here. Suddenly, a half-hippo approaches Cherry and yells, Please help me. One of these guys had stolen my clothes. Can you guess who? Take a look at the dog's badge. It says Hippo. 
So it was the dog who stole his shirt. Cherry meets the local farmer, Timothy. He used to keep chickens in another country. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a big farm in this village and moved there. Soon, Timothy got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't get upset and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Timothy invites Cherry over for dinner at home. But unfortunately, Cherry's ex-boyfriend Drake had already found them. He captures Timothy and Cherry at the farmer's house. Suddenly, the phone rings. Drake allows Timothy to take the phone, but he can't reveal the situation. Otherwise, Drake will use his magic wand to turn them into snakes. So Timothy replies, Hey mom, how can I help you? I'm home and about to go to bed. If it's not an emergency, can I call you later? I'm really sleepy. 30 minutes later, the police arrive, confiscate the magic wand and rescue the guys. How did Timothy ask for help? He held the mute button saying everything except the words, help, home, emergency, and call. The detective gives Drake a chance to get freedom. He can pass through one of these three doors. Jungles full of dangerous animals are hiding behind the first door. Behind the second door, there's a tank with ice water that is impossible to stand in for even a minute. And there's a giant fire-breathing dino behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? Drake should pick the third door. Dinos don't breathe fire, and they went extinct millions of years ago. Drake returns to his castle and discovers that someone had broken all the bottles with his precious potions in his lap. Drake gets furious and interrogates his three goblin servants. Willie says, I was cleaning the castle all day long. I didn't even enter your lab today. Tilly says, I was picking roses in the garden in the morning. Then I entered your lab to bring rose petals for your potions. Everything was fine. And Billy says, I was cooking dinner in the kitchen and then I went to the bathroom to take a quick shower. Who's lying? Tilly, he didn't pick the roses. They're still in the garden. Meanwhile, Timothy drives Cherry home. They stop to buy something on the way. Can you guess what exactly by just looking at this image? Kiwi! Then Timothy takes two pictures of Cherry. Can you find 10 differences between them? Here they are! Someone robbed Cherry's house when she was on a picnic on the 4th of July. The detective finds four suspects and questions them about what they were doing that day. Bobby, the fireman, says, I was on duty the day before. I was very tired, so I went sleeping all day long. Nick is a student. He says, I was celebrating Independence Day with my family. Rick, the manager, says, It was a holiday and I was playing games with my roommates. Then we watched TV all night. And Kyle, the postman, says, I was at the post office all day. All my colleagues saw me. The detective identifies the robber immediately. What about you? It was Kyle. He couldn't work at a post office on the 4th of July. It's a public holiday. Cherry receives her first salary and hides the cash in her closet. Cherry's three roommates are not at home at this time. So she just leaves the money and goes to the gym right away. 
After a while, Cherry returns home and discovers that her money had been stolen from the closet. She starts looking all over the room, but finds no clues. Suddenly, her three roommates enter the room. Cherry asks each of them, Has anyone stolen my money? Bella replies, I was in college all day. I just got home from lunch and I didn't enter this room. Anna says, I came home for lunch as well, but after Bella. I opened the closet door to look for some documents, but there was no money inside. And Megan says, I had no idea that you were hiding cash in the closet. I just returned from work. You should talk to the security guard. Who's the thief? Bella must have concluded that if Cherry is searching this room, money should have been stolen only from here, so she doesn't sound suspicious. But Anna said that she had searched the closet and found no money. Meanwhile, Cherry didn't mention the closet in the first place. Therefore, Anna is the thief. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Ever wondered if you're a musical genius? With this test, you'll be able to figure out if you're the new Mozart or if you're in desperate need of some music lessons. Grab your headphones and good luck! For starters, we'll be measuring your pitch knowledge. If you're the type of person that sings out of tune to your favorite songs, you'll learn a lot from this. But if you're pitch perfect, well then just go join a musical already. You'll hear two notes played one after the other. Can you tell if the second note is lower or the same as the first one? If you said it was lower, then you're right. A couple more points and you could join Taylor Swift's crew on tour, huh? Yeah. The next notes may be a little more high-pitched, but can you tell if the second note is higher or lower than the first? Did you say higher? Then you got it right. Okay, so this one will get a tiny bit harder. You'll hear two notes separated by a five-second gap. Can you tell if they're the same or different? Yep. They're the same. I have to say, I like where this is going. For this next round, you'll hear a chord and a note. If you don't know the difference between the two, just keep in mind that a chord is made up of multiple notes. We'll need you to tell us if you think this chord and this note will go well together or if they clash with each other. I'd say they go really well together, right? Congratulations, you made it through the first part of this test without giving up. That sure says something about you, huh? But before we move on to the second part, let's bring some sound-related trivia. What's the animal with one of the highest hearing capabilities? If you said it's a moth, then you got it right. These little ones can hear up to 300 kilohertz. And you've made it to the second round. This time, we're testing your producer skills. Like any good musical producer, you need to master harmonies. So, right now, you'll hear a scale and a note. We need you to assess if this scale and this note will match well together, or if they don't fit at all. Here it goes. Hmm. 
Hmm, I'd say they do match, right? Moving on, let's talk about melody. What is a melody, you might ask? Technically speaking, it's a combination of pitch and rhythm. Popularly speaking, it's the catchy tune that stays in your head for days on end. For this part, you'll hear a chord followed by a melody. Can you tell if both of them fit together or if they sound totally terrible? Oh my gosh, I've never heard anything worse in my life. Just kidding, of course I have. But the answer is no, they don't fit together. Okay, this one is the same as before. Does this melody fit with the chord? Or do they clash? Oh, much better now. They do fit together, right? Good for you. You've just completed the second part of this complex test. I'm hoping you got most of the answers right. What do you say? By your results so far, are you going to be the next Harry Styles or Olivia Rodrigo? I hope so. For this bonus round, we're going to talk about tonality. There are two main types of tonalities in Western music, major and minor. Major scales and chords sound open and lively, and they're used to convey happy emotions. While minor scales and chords sound closed and dark. An artist uses this tonality when they want you to feel a sadder emotion. So, for this round, you'll hear a chord followed by a short melody. Just like we were doing before. But this time, I need you to tell me if this sample is a major or a minor tonality. Here it goes! Wait, is that a sample from an Adele song? It's definitely a minor tonality, right? It conveys a sadder, more intense feel to it. Okay, let's move on, shall we? Listen to this sample and tell us if you think it's a major or minor tonality. Ah, this sounds happy, so major it is. Since we're here testing for musical geniuses, this next round will get a lot tougher. You see, musical melodies have something musicians call dissonance and consonance. You can think of it as a question and an answer. This is an example of a question. Well, this would sound more like an answer. while one part of the melody goes up and the other seems to go down, right? Okay, geniuses, listen to this melody and tell us, does this sound like a question or an answer? Yikes, this was hard. If you said it sounded like an answer, then you nailed it, Beethoven. Let's try this one for a time. Can you tell if this melody sounds like it's resolved, like an answer, or unresolved, like a question? This was definitely unresolved. Hooray, you guys! I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. So we're moving on to the last section of our test. If you learned anything by now, you'll be able to get this next question right. For this part, you'll hear seven consecutive ascending notes. Then, we'll pause for five seconds and you will hear a single note. We need you to assess whether the last note we played is contained in the seven-note scale we played you. Got it? Here it goes! If you think it was contained in the seven-note scale, then you got it right. 
and you definitely have an amazing ear. Let's do this once more. Listen to the scale and assess whether the last note is contained in the scale. Again, it was contained by the seven-note scale. Since our ears are heated up, let's take this one further. For this part, you'll hear two four-note melodies. Your job is to identify whether the four notes used in the first melody are the same as the ones used in the second melody. Here's a tip. We won't change multiple notes. Only one. Okay, here it goes. If you identified that the last note was changed, then you got it right. Same thing here. Listen to both melodies and tell us if they are the same or if one of the notes was changed. Yeah, you're so good! Both melodies were identical. Let's repeat the exercise we just did, but this time, we're allowed to change more than one note in the second melody. Here it goes! So the second and fourth notes from the second melody were altered, right? I have to say, if you got those last ones right, you definitely are a musical genius. Before we head on to our last bonus round, let's count your points. If you got 90% or plus correctly, then you're definitely the next Mozart. If you got between 70 and 80%, then you have a sharp ear, but still, you need to work on it a bit more. If you scored between 50 and 60%, what can I say? Does anybody got a contact of a music teacher here? And if you scored below that, do the whole thing again, will you? And now, for the great finale, I give you the world's best ear test. Great musicians have to have great ears. So let's check where y'all are currently standing in the frequency spectrum. FYI, an average person can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Here's how this will work. We'll travel across and beyond the human sound spectrum and play some sound frequencies a human ear usually can't perceive. As soon as you begin to hear the sound, pause the video. Check the number on the screen. Ready? Three, two, one, go! So what number did you get? If you didn't score so well, don't worry about it. Maybe in the next lifetime you'll come as a bat and have super hearing qualities. Just kidding. I hope you had fun doing it, though. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Let's take a good look at this rainbow. How many colors can you see? I guess most of you will answer seven. First, we have red and orange, then yellow, green, and blue. And to top it off, indigo and violet. I hate to break it to you, though, but there aren't actually seven colors in a rainbow. 
the correct amount would be infinite. Our eyes just can't perceive all of them, only the seven main ones. How our brain perceives color is one of the most interesting scientific mysteries. So, how about we go deeper into the science behind it all? Rainbows are great examples, but to understand how they happen, we have to talk about the sun. Well, we have to talk about light and wavelengths. Thanks to Isaac Newton, people understood that white light contains all of the wavelengths of the color spectrum. Let some white light pass through a chunk of glass and you'll get a rainbow refracted on the other side. Yeah, very much like that famous Pink Floyd album cover we know and love. If you want to try something similar at home, here's what you can do. Grab a glass of water and put a mirror inside. Now, grab a flashlight and point it at the mirror diagonally. The white light from the flashlight will hit the mirror, refract, and disperse into the seven colors of the rainbow. If you look at the ceiling, you'll likely see a rainbow that has just formed there. Isaac Newton's experiment proved that a color is just a wavelength of electromagnetic radiation. Have I just complicated things more instead of clarifying them? These big words may sound scary, but the concept is actually quite simple. For instance, radio waves are another example of electromagnetic radiation. X-rays obviously are an example of that too. Our eyes just can't perceive the wavelength of these phenomena. Imagine if you could see radio news flying by while you were trying to get some work done. It's best we can't see it all, that's for sure. But our eyes can and do perceive color wavelengths. For instance, violet has the lowest wavelength, about 380 nanometers. And red has the longest wavelength of them all, up to 740 nanometers. Yet, if it was that simple, then optical illusions wouldn't really exist. Our eyes play tricks on us and make us see things differently than they are in reality. We all remember the blue dress versus white dress hullabaloo, don't we? Take a look at this image. It seems like there's a moving square that's changing colors, right? What shades do you see? Gray? Then pink? It might look that way, but in reality, the square doesn't change color at all. The creator of this illusion is Japanese psychologist and artist Akiyoshi Kitaoka. According to him, what we perceive as different colors is our brain trying to predict the color of the square in relation to its surroundings. Let's review some eye anatomy real quick. At the back of your eye, in the retina, there are special photoreceptor cells called cones. These cones are the ones that absorb photons, tiny units of light. This process only helps us see something because the cones send electrical impulses down our optic nerves, which are an extension of our nervous system. You know, that fabric of spider-like neurons that communicates with one another electrically and makes us humans live, breathe, and think. Now, I've mentioned that there are infinite colors in the color spectrum, right? But people don't have an infinite amount of different cones to perceive all those unique shades. We perceive color with the help of just three different types of cones. Here's how it works. Each cone is responsible for absorbing different wavelengths of light. Like three brothers that decided to work together, each one is responsible for its own visual function. One cone is in charge of longer wavelengths, so it's known as L. This buddy is sensitive to the more reddish colors of the spectrum, including yellow, a bit of green, and no blue at all. This means that if you're in the jungle looking at a macaw, the L cone will help you see most of the bird, but it'll need a little help from its brother S. S is the one part that's sensitive to shorter wavelengths, that's the bluish part of the spectrum. Together with M, the third cone, your eyes and brain will perceive all of the colors of the macaw. Some people are born without all three cones, this is called color blindness. The most common color blindness is the inability to distinguish between red and green. But then, there are also people born without the ability to distinguish the colors from the blue-yellow cone. Take a look at this image. Is there anything inside the dotted circle? If you've managed to distinguish the number 74, that means you've got all three cones. Sometimes though, our eyes and brain get confused. Even if our brain is like a highly technological machine, some signals get entangled, and this creates gaps, loopholes. 
Neuroscientists say that 40% of our brain is involved in vision. So when you look at something like this bouncing beach ball right here, signals are sent to over 30 areas of your brain. Each area is responsible for processing a different thing. Color is just one of them. You also need to be able to detect motion and shape, but that's stuff for another video. A lot of our perception of color has to do with our memories. Let's revise a bit. Our brain is like a highly technological machine. Check. It serves as a database where we keep memories and registries of stuff, like banana is yellow. Check. Check. Why am I telling you this? Because usually we see stuff in different lighting. For instance, take a look at this studio image of a banana. Now, take a look at this banana at twilight when the lighting is dim. The banana changes its color, but we perceive it as yellow because we remember that a banana is yellow. Lighting was probably the reason why some people saw that infamous dress as white and others saw it as blue. Let's look at the science behind it. Pascal Wallisch, a neuroscientist at New York University, conducted an online survey with 13,000 people trying to crack the white dress, blue dress mystery. And he found out something absurdly surprising. The study showed that the difference between the two groups of people was linked to the time they fell asleep and woke up. Night owls, or people who like sleeping and waking up late, were more likely to see the dress as black and blue while larks, aka early birds, were more likely to see it as white and gold. Why are these things connected, you might ask? Early birds are people that spend more time in daylight than night owls, so when they look at that poorly lit photo, they perceive it in the way that they're used to seeing things on a daily basis. In this case, they're used to seeing things bathed in sunlight, so they assume that that's what illuminates the dress. As a result, they perceive the dress as white and gold. The same happens with those who see it as blue and black. The main difference is that these people are used to artificial light, since most of their waking hours happen during the night. Crazy, huh? We looked at a lot of complex concepts today, but does it explain why an apple is often red and an orange is orange? Well, if you're able to perceive an apple as red or a grape as purple, that's because that color is the only one that is being reflected by the object. It happens like this. White light, which contains all colors, hits an apple. The apple absorbs all color wavelengths, except red. Let's say the apple rejects the color red. It reflects it outward. And that's what our eyes perceive. Cool, huh? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.